It was good to have each and every one here. We give Phil a hard time, but we do appreciate his prayers. <laughs> Tonight I want to speak on something that uh, still just runs rampant in this nation. And it's a terrible, terrible uh, situation. We now have many generations who are suffering because of this terribleness that has been placed upon society. Uh, it has been, since even Old Testament time, something that men have dealt with, been a participant in. But it uh, literally blew apart in this nation in about the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and that's divorce. It has literally taken hold on many families and has ruined the family. But a statement that I heard one time has always stuck with me, and it's one that grieves me to my very, to the very pit of my heart and that is a statement of dealing with the children oh that's okay they're young they'll get over it I want to do what I want to do they'll get over it children don't get over it unfortunately children many times will follow the pattern that has been set for them And it's sad because it tears even their families apart. And it just continues to go like a snowball. I know of a family that out of all of the children that I knew in the family, <coughs> only one of them has survived in marriage. Every one of them went through divorce. Every one of them because of the pattern that was set for them because of the selfishness and Dub will just have to pardon me while I borrow from him but it can all be boiled down to selfishness what I want I don't care about you you'll get over it it's what I want divorce defined by Merriam-Webster dictionary it says, to end marriage with one spouse by divorce, to dissolve the marriage contract between, to make or keep separate divorce. It is a tearing asunder of a holy setup by God. Something that he from the very beginning had set into motion. And he wanted it to continue. In the Old Testament, it teaches on divorce. When the Jews were uh, divorcing, they were suffered to put away wives by giving them a bill of divorcement. Now, it wasn't that God liked the situation. But they were to put their wives away with a bill of divorcement, Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. Malachi 2.16 says that God hated divorce. He hates divorce. God does not like divorce. There is only two reasons for dissolving the wedding or the wedding the marriage contract between two people. He leans real heavily upon the one, and that is the death of one of them. If one of the parties is dead, then the other party is released and may go and find another mate if they choose to. But we're going to discuss the other here in just a short In the latter part of Malachi 
2.16, it says, Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. And that is dealing with divorce. Do not deal treacherously in your divorce. Many deal treacherously. Many families are taken down in shame because one party wants to go party. Wants to go have a good time. I know of the family uh, in which the father hesitated not to shame his family by parading women through. It gave him some kind of a sick feeling of, I got the power, I guess. What kind of shame that puts on the children? What kind of shame it put on the wife? For him to be so selfish, so brazen. This bill of divorcement was given because of the hardness of the Jew's heart. Matthew 19.8 Marriage was and is binding for life. Once one enters into the contract of marriage, it is for life, which is the reason that young people need to pay attention to the mate they are choosing. You had better look to see what kind of mate you are choosing. If you choose of the world, you will reap that of the world. Not always few cases you don't few cases you're able to uh, there's been the the uh, good old boy has been changed by that young lady but what a gamble why would you gamble something like that you need to choose a mate that has the same focus as what you do marriage is binding for life mark 10 2 through 9, Romans 7, 2 and 3, Matthew 19, 3 and 9. Marriage is not something that you get up and you change from day to day. I know of a woman who was torn apart and nearly lost her job because of a divorce. Because her husband woke up one day and said, you know what, today's as good a day as any, get out. She had no warning. And he was quite serious. When she come home, her stuff was moved out. Selfishness. He had found another woman. She nearly lost her job. It did tear her self-esteem down. It tore her and her children apart. How terrible situation. Marriage is not this filthy abomination that this nation now is embracing. It is between one man, one woman. Matthew 19, 4 through 5. It is not this same-sex trash that we are now having put upon us and say that that is marriage. It is not marriage. It is trash. Marriage is to be, as always uh, had been stated, uh, had already been stated, a lifelong contract, Matthew 19.6. It's not to be entered into lightly. Whenever, and i would said it before, but whenever I was younger, I was taught that marriage was a 50-50 proposition. And that was a lie, as far as I'm concerned. Marriage is not a 50-50 proposition. It is, to say the least, 110 and 110. And I know I've said it before. But at any time you think that you're the one who's putting in, and the other one's not, you might check with the other party because it just very well might be that you're not seeing everything that you think you are. They may see it the same way, waiting on you to put in your other 100% instead of that little low 10% you've been putting in. Marriage is tough. 
because you've got two different people that you're trying to make one out of. You have to become the one in order to make it work. Divorce is on the table. People may get divorced for any reason. And it's sad that that's so. And they lump it all under the heading of incompatibility. Instead of what it really is, adultery, found another mate, dissatisfied with the one you've got. In fact, one popular television program, I hadn't watched it in years, but uh, they advertised it and showed part of the advertisement. And uh, they just stated, well, we just fell out of love like it was nothing. You fell out of love. Now marriage, uh, after an unscriptural, uh, pardon me, I skip a line. I do apologize. This will make more sense now. Uh, there are, <coughs> for divorce, there is one reason given for fornication is a valid cause for divorce. Matthew uh, 5, 27 through 32, and Mark 10, 11 through 12. When you're in a marriage contract, well, let me just say this, fornication actually takes in a whole lot more than just a marriage contract, all right? Um, the dissolving of it. <clears throat> you should not be having sex to start with with anyone until you are married and by that to the right party and when I say the right party I mean someone who has a right to get married too many people out there marry and they don't have a right to be in a marriage to start with but <clears throat> for fornication those who will step outside of the marriage and have an affair oh Hollywood likes to take that and glamorize it, just make it look so, just so wonderful. Oh, how, how sweet that is, and just how, oh my, they just had a little fling. It's not a little fling, not in God's eyes. And it does a great deal of damage to the other party. You can hurt the other party for life, and cause it to where you get a divorce. And if you get divorced because of adultery and you're the guilty party, guess what about getting into another marriage? You can't do it. You cannot do it. Now, I'll use my wife so that I don't get in trouble with anyone else in the congregation, but let's say that I step out. My wife has a right for remarriage if she can't stay with me but I don't have a right to go look for another mate. Even if she gets married again, I'm still bound to my original marriage. Now, marriage after an unscriptural <coughs> uh, marriage does not constitute, uh, or pardon me, does constitute adultery. As I've already said, you're bound to the original marriage. You cannot step out. Luke 16, 18. And adulterers will be judged. Hebrew 13, 4. Adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. This teaching or belief that's been put upon our society also in dealing with, well... I understand that divorce is wrong, but you know what? Me and Sally, we got together before we became Christians, so now that we're Christians, everything's okay. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. We can be together. We can go on with our lives, and we can praise Jesus and God and say everything's okay. You don't find that in the Bible. You will not find it in the Bible because... It's not there. It's wrong. 
that is wrong as the day is long. If you have gotten into a situation where you lose your first marriage for an unscriptural reason, it is lost for an unscriptural reason. You cannot enter into another one and make it right. You cannot do it. Those separated for unscriptural reasons must, as I've already stated, remain unmarried unless they reconcile to the former mate. If a reconciliation between them two occurs and you get yourselves back together, then in that marriage you can stay because that's the original contract. That is the marriage you're bound to. You can reconcile and save the marriage and go forth. But again, you cannot. I had a gentleman that I talked with and I believe he was very much so wrong. <coughs> yes, I forgive her. And then I met Sally. And I, I just couldn't handle it anymore, so I went ahead and divorced her anyway because uh, she stepped out. What kind of forgiveness is that? You told her the marriage was going to be okay. You were going to do right. You had forgiven her. Well, what did, what did he do wrong? He had lied to her because all he was doing was waiting until he found somebody. He found Sally and all of a sudden, whoop, wait a minute. She's the one that stepped out. So therefore, I can still go ahead. That's wrong. That is wrong. If reconciliation between the two happens, that's what should happen. In God's eyes... They need to make that marriage work. They need to get back together, work out their differences, put aside, and go forward. Will it be easy? Probably not. Probably not, because you're going to have the guilt of somebody stepping out, the shame of somebody being trodden underfoot. Living together first does not make for a guarantee of a good marriage. I work with people. I deal with people who believe that it's okay to step in. How are you going to know if you're right for each other if you don't live together? And that's their argument. Well, we can live together first, make sure that it's going to be okay. Then if it's not, well, at least we didn't get married. Whew. We can get out of it. Well, what are you going to do with your kids? Oh, well, he needs to pay me child support, of course. Well, he can see them every now and then. Again, kids are in trouble. So living together does not make a guarantee that you're going to have a good marriage. In fact, more times than not, it messes it up. It makes no difference if... The whole world is doing it. It is still wrong before God. Marriage is a commitment that one needs to consider and weigh heavy on before entering into it. Marriage is a beautiful thing. It can be. Or it can be one of the harshest things that one has ever come across. I dealt with a man who said, I got divorced because I was miserable around her. I was miserable by myself, and I was miserable about around everybody else. Best thing we ever did was separate. Again, you get back to what are you putting into your marriage. A lot of times you have to overlook stuff. You have to put it behind you. And sometimes, yeah. You may be the one that has to go forth, go first and say, you know, I apologize. Let's work this out. The lesson is yours. If there's been anyone here who perhaps has stepped outside the bounds of the gospel. You had put on Christ, but for whatever reason, the world had gotten hold of you again.
whatever the need may be, if we can help you in any way, please make it known as we stand and sit.